Hello, esteemed crew, exclamation point. To the ongoing question of first party Nintendo cowering in a corner from DLSS. <laughs> what? Is it possible Nintendo devs are enormous sticklers for quote unquote image purity? And that's why oh, they boy. don't use it or even AA half the time. Maybe Shigeru Miyamoto <laughs> is the kind of person who goes on Reddit to complain about fake frames and TAA. <laughs> More sincerely, Nintendo's general shirking of temporal AA slash upscaling does feel intentional to me. Thoughts? Uh, John, what do you think about this? Because, um, I mean, they have used anti-aliasing sparingly in first-party projects, right? Sure. And, but, um, usually, but, you know. but, yeah, it doesn't. it's not really on their radar, really, is it? Well, they sure seem to love FSR1 for some reason. <laughs> yes. So whoever, whatever AMD representative was able, was there at Nintendo selling this as a feature, <laughs> they did a good job because <laughs> they, they can't seem to get enough of it. Uh, I, so I'm not ready to make it, make a strong statement on this either way yet because it, we're too early in the Switch 2 generation. And I genuinely think that some of the engines they've been using perhaps don't have an easy way to implement this. Right. Like for instance, if it doesn't properly support motion vectors or something, and you can't you can't just like magically make DLSS work with an engine that doesn't have the necessary you know support for the features DLSS needs, right? And so it's entirely feasible that they just haven't reached the point where the games they've shipped have the features necessary and they didn't want to put in the engineering time to implement it for whatever reason. Um so but because they talk about this when you look at how they refer to it in the welcome tour and you know obviously they engineered this device with the dlss is not free it requires silicon right to be implemented if they didn't have any if they didn't feel it had some value i don't think they would have wasted the space on it right mm -hmm. uh even though it is sort of part and parcel with nvidia's chips but i feel like eventually they're going to want to use this uh, especially since their standards are low enough that they're okay with FSR one, right? Uh, surely they would see that this is a better solution, right? Um, so, I don't think they're opposed to this kind of upscaling stuff because of the recent use on FSR one. I think they're just slow and behind on it, and that we will probably eventually start to see it. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, for some games, I can see the image purity argument uh, because. A lot of their games have the more cartoony style. They don't have a lot of like complex uh, in-surface shapes and patterns to deal with. So even though you don't get super smooth edges, they're still good enough. And the aliasing is kept to a reasonable level. Like I, you know, you play Mario Kart World, just due to the nature of how the visuals are designed, it's not the image quality is fine. I would say, right? It does not look bad in that regard at all. So it really kind of depends on what the game is as to whether it would help. So, uh, What we'll about see. Donkey Kong Bonanza? Obviously, there's uh, FSR1 mentioned there, and also yeah. S SMAA. Is it T2X, or is it... Do we know? No, I just think it's Bonanza, regular. Probably. Yeah, regular post-process SMAA combined with FSR1. And that's one where I think the image quality is mediocre. Uh, right. It's actually all right. And it's good in portable mode, but in dock mode, it's kind of blah overall but it doesn't it's not ruinous or anything but that that is certainly a game where i think if they had been able to implement this stuff in at an engine level that we would have had better results probably with dlss mm. but, uh, but historically they you know going back to the switch one there was perfectly valid use case scenarios for taa on switch one which nintendo well, never really pursued that's true but i guess thinking about taa though again it's true for something like Donkey Kong, where you are erasing large parts of the world, there is a, also a possibility that TA artifacts could be more noticeable than usual, maybe, depending on how they implement it. So I could see maybe there, but I don't know, man. Nintendo is just always, except for during the N64 era, where they were ahead of the curve, they've, they're have they largely behind the curve when it comes to anything anti-aliasing related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, I think there's been also... Just like sometimes we see with Japanese development that they're out of step with like uh, niche user demands coming from the Western market, like people who care about anti-aliasing and play Nintendo games, there isn't a great overlap, maybe always, but it's still a vocal contingent. And, uh, you know, uh, I think there's always been an issue of like having those voices be heard 
you know, across an ocean, across a language barrier. And uh, the, you see that on PC all the time. And I think there's also a bit of that, just not being aware that this is a generally accepted, oh, people expect their games not to be filled with jaggies. <laughs> and okay. uh, yeah, I think it is sometimes just like a like a, a language barrier that it can occur. Okay. Well, you know, I guess we just have to sort of watch this space, but it is such an important part of the um, of the of the Switch Two proposition. It has already shown some pretty impressive results, I'd say. So, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what Nintendo does with it. Um, certainly, if the existence of this tiny DLSS or uh, the light weight DLSS version, I mean, Nintendo would have taken point on that from its development or, or certainly collaborated with uh, NVIDIA to make it actually a viable solution. So there is a certain degree of, you know, uh, investment from Nintendo in making it happen, even if they aren't using it themselves. So, you know, I guess we just have to wait and see. 